Hello and welcome to see how to make a golf course available for playing with Caddy on Golf Course Mapping Tool. Let's get right to it. I want to map the Pebble Beach links, so first I go and see if the course is already in the system. I go to Browse Courses, pick the country, order the list alphabetically, and it seems that the course has not been mapped yet. Let's go back to the main menu and start adding a course. The first thing to do is enter basic information about the course. I have already logged to the home page of Pebble Beach Links to get the information. I copy and paste the exact course name, address, and contact data from the course home page to make sure I get them right. This helps players to contact the course directly from Caddion app in their smartphone. The Caddion application calculates your Stableford points if the course rating and slope of the course is known. We have that in this case, so I go ahead and press the Enter Rating and Slope button. I use the T names or the coding that the course itself is using. In this case, we start with black. The rating and slope values are different to men and ladies, as well as for different T boxes. I add all the available T's and the respective ratings and slope values and press the Save once I'm done. The red highlight indicates that there's a problem with the website link, so I complete it before I can save the form. Now, I need to decide if I want to get credit for mapping the course and let others see my name. Well, I do, so I click the checkbox. It's time to save the form and let the mapper to locate the course based on the address information I've provided. If the quality of the satellite map is poor, please contact support at caddyon.com and we might be able to help you there. And now we're ready to start tracing the course. I zoom the map to the T area of the first hole in the course. From the map tool on the left hand side, I select the T tool. I bring the pointer to the mapping canvas at the corner of the T area and click on the left mouse button to create a node. I move the pointer to the next corner and click the mouse button again. I do the other two corners in a similar way until I come back to the first node and click it to complete the first T box. As you can see here, I've drawn the T box to be a bit larger than what is actually on the screen, and you should do it in a similar manner when you're mapping. I can move any point of the selected object by holding down the mouse button at the node and dragging it to its new location. I move on to do the other T's as well. I can use the ruler to check that the tee box is in the correct place. I measure the distance on the map, either in meters or yards, and compare it against the scorecard. As you can see with this hole, the location of the tee boxes is obvious, but that might not be the case with all mapped material. Next, we move on to draw the hazards and we start with the sand traps. I select the sand tool from the map tools and then click the Trace checkbox from the Options menu on the navigation bar. I go to the mapping canvas and bring the pointer near to the top left corner of the bunker. I click the left mouse button and hold it down. I move the pointer to the bottom right corner of the bunker. I release the mouse button and click the selected bunker area. The mapper offers me three different pre-trace tools. I pick the best option and the bunker is now automatically traced. I can still make corrections to any of those nodes if needed. If you're not getting good results from the trace, try selecting the area again as closely to the borders of the bunker as possible. Once the sand hazard has been created, the object is added to the mapping tools area on the left. The yellow icon with the exclamation mark on the object indicates that the object is not fully defined. With the object selected, I go to the location area of the map tools First, I determine that this bunker is a green hazard. Then, looking from the direction of play, I can see that it's on the left side of the green. The hazard is now correctly presented in the rangefinder view of the Caddion app. Next, I repeat this step for all the other sand hazards on this hole. On the first hole of the Pebble Beach links, there are no water hazards, so we move on to tracing the green. I pick the green tool from the Tools menu and use the maximum zoom level where the green fits to my screen. I start clicking nodes around the green, following the green outline as closely as possible and having enough nodes to make the object smooth and round. 
In case I get lost, I can undo the latest node by pressing the right mouse button. Once I've completed the object, I can move an existing node to a new place. I click it, hold the mouse button down, and drag the node to its new place. I can also add more nodes by clicking a light shaded node between the existing nodes. Hold the mouse button down and drag the node to its correct position. Now that the green is done, we can move forward to do the fairway. I select the fairway tool from the map tools and start plotting the nodes. On some courses, the fairway goes around the green, but here we trace it to its finish at the front of the green. It could even be that there's no fairway altogether. Use your best judgment on how to trace the fairway, but remember to use enough nodes to make the object nice and round. We're now almost done with the first hole. Since the hole is not straight, I add a pivot point to it. Pivots increase the accuracy of the distance in the range viewfinder. I add the pivot to the point where the hole makes a turn. Next, we draw a border for the hole. I zoom the map so that the entire hole fits to my screen. I pick the border tool and start creating nodes to the mapping canvas around the first hole. All other objects I've drawn for the first hole must be inside this border. It's good to include enough rough within the border, but still following the shape of the fairway. The last thing to do is to enter the par number for the hole together with the hole handicap or index number. The ladies handicap value is only needed if it differs from that of the men. Please note that the hole must have at least a green, a tee box, and a border defined. Otherwise, it can't be saved. It's now time to save our work and we're done with the first hole. You can move on to the next hole right away or continue the mapping later on. At the moment, you can only edit courses that you have drawn yourself. To edit an existing hole, just select it from the navigation bar and the objects from the hole appear. Select the object you want to edit from the mapping canvas by clicking it or from the object's collection on the left. You can easily change the object type if needed. In cases where the same object is between two different holes, you might want to copy the object to another hole. To delete the whole object, just click the delete button. Let's have a look at the water hazards. The tracing technique is the same as with other objects, but you have to judge where the border of the hazard goes. Trace the line to the land rather than to the water. As with bunkers, select the water hazard to be related either with the fairway or green together with its location data. If the hazard is clearly on two or more sides of the fairway or green, or it stretches from the fairway to the green, you can split it into two different objects. This way, the range finder in the application gives better information to the player as where the hazard is located. After completing all the holes of the course, please send an email to support at caddyon.com to get the course checked and transfer it to the database of finalized courses. Please download the Mapper user manual for additional tips and tricks. And if you have questions, please contact us at support at caddyon.com. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your game.